Hello everyone, welcome to another video of mine, it's Commander Blay, and this is another video where I discuss the main topics and all the latest news surrounding Chelsea and in this video of mine I'll be speaking about the new kit leaks for the confirmed 2020-21 Premier League season, our new um, obviously you know, Chelsea kits, home kits that's been leaked by footy headlines and we, you know, you know, give my thoughts and opinions. We're going to be looking into detail about the kits and what I give it out of 10 rating wise going into detail and letting you guys know what our latest kits are and you know, all the rumoured link all the rumoured leaks for next season. I can also be speaking about the goalkeeping situation about Kepa and his potential loan um, move to Valencia on a two-year loan spell and the potential goalkeeper targets we could look at and who I'd think fit, you know, looking at the statistics, details, stats, all of that good stuff. Now, so before I do get into it, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification and comment down below your thoughts on each topic that I do speak about. But without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Now, starting off with the kit launch. Now, obviously, the kit... It hasn't been confirmed that it's going to be our kit. Obviously, the kit launch hasn't even begun. We haven't finished yet the current Premier League season as it stands. Uh, but obviously, our new sponsor, Free, we've known this for time now. Our new sponsor can be Free. But Yokohama, which is our old sponsor, has renewed its new contract with Chelsea. So we have three, we're going to have three to four sponsors on our shirt. We're going to have the, the Free logo, Yokohama, the Hyundai, and obviously the Nike deal as well. So let's look at the kits first of all. Now, this is the home kit as you've got on your screen right now. A nice, dark, blue-toned um, you know, kit with the massive free logo with the black um, on the collar and on the sleeves as well was like an accent and you got the high on die badge um, the sponsor with a Nike and looks like the badge is going to be um, knitted on rather than plasters on and to be honest I would prefer that I'd rather it be you know knitted on because it makes it look more classier it gives the, the kit more authentic or authenticity as well but the, the thing that really surprised me what stood out is the actual logo now ideally I would have liked the free logo to be a bit smaller now there was talk whether you wanted the actual number three or in writing so in letters th R E E dot. Now, personally, I think the logo does look a bit better, but I would have liked it to be a bit smaller. And obviously, the white does work well. Obviously, Chelsea badge, it's, it, is, it does consist of blue and white. But, you know, I don't have any problem with the colour because white, black, and blue, you know, they, they work quite well together. But I think that the, the actual logo is a bit too big, in my personal opinion. But what do you guys think? Because like, the badge looks nice, the Nike, um, I really like the accents. Now, ideally, you could have had maybe a red accent, um, like we had a couple of years ago on the sleeves and potentially up here on the collar. But overall, it's a really classic kit. And what other thing I like about this kit as well, it's the, the toneness and the darkness of the color blue. Now, obviously, this season's current home kit and last season kit, it was a, quite a light shade of blue, which I quite like, but I like it a bit more contrast, a bit bright. It's, it's not as bright, it's more con contrasted. And I think that it's quite nice, more of a dark, darker blue, like a royal blue in a sense. I think it works really, really well. And I think that it's, it's a very nice kit. It looks classy, it's smooth, it's a clean kit. It's nice, and as you can see with more detail, as you see on your screen right now, it looks like it has those little black stripes going across, uh, across the shirt. That kind of like metal, metal kind of like structure, that metallic feature. I quite like that. Again, it gives that um, shirt a bit of a uh, bit more special, makes it a bit nicer, cleaner. In my personal opinion, here you have another image of that as well alongside the badge. Like I said, the badge looks like going to be knitted on, which is quite nice. Um, I quite like the badge on there. And like I said, as you can see right now in more detail. It's not actually black, it's more navy. It's more of a navy kind of um, texture on the sleeves and on the collar as well. I quite like it, honestly. I'm a fan of it, to be honest. I'm definitely be copying this. This will be a shirt that I will be purchasing. Uh, if I want to give it out of 10, you know what? I think it's one of our best kits in the last three, four years. I'll definitely give it a 7.58 out of 10. But what would you guys give it out of 10 as a rating? Um, you know, do you like the kit or do you think it's a horrible kit? Now, regarding the second kit and the third kit, hopefully... You guys may have seen the rumoured pictures of third kit looking similar like a Crystal Palace kit. Hopefully that is not the case. Apparently that is not the case. Um, there are rumours it could be yellow and black, our second, our away kit and our third kit. So that's going to be quite interesting to see what happens there. But like I said, this hasn't been confirmed. This is just rumours. But footy headlines who have leaked this, they are relatively reliable when it comes to leaking kits. And this is highly likely this, that this will be our kit for next season. Like I said, it's a clean design. It's nice. And when we have our new signings wearing it, it's going to look even crispier. It's going to look beautiful. But like I said, give me a rating out of 10. What would you give the actual shirt out of 10? Like I said, I'm a massive fan of it. I quite like it. And I think it does suit us uh, very well in my personal opinion. But moving on to the second part of this video, that is the goalkeeping situation. Now, it came out by reports yesterday. However, there were these news in my personal opinion, it's a bit recycled. Now, the, this news has come out a couple of months ago as regarding Valencia's interest in Kepa or Ufa Balaga. Now, we know that Kepa, being the world's most expensive goalkeeper, hasn't lived up to his price like this season. Obviously, a lot of poor performances, one of the worst save percentages in Europe and in the Premier League. And 
He's been below average, below average, subpar, hasn't been good enough. But like I said, his performance I've picked up recently, I still have faith in him that he can be world class, but there's areas of the game that need to improve. He has improved in the last couple of games, but it was reported by various Spanish publications and reports that Valencia are interested in signing Kepa. Obviously, they can't afford his you know price tag of around £70 million. However, they would like to take him on a two-year loan deal, and there could be a triangle deal here where Kepa goes on loan on a two-year loan deal to Valencia with a potential option to buy. Silicon then moves from Valencia to Ajax, allowing Onana to come to Chelsea. Now, for me, there's a lot of complications there. I don't see how the logistics work. I don't see how the finances work either. Personally, this is highly unlikely. Number one, we invested a lot of money in Kepa. Not just the price tag, but the actual wages. You know, Kepa's nearly on £200,000 a week. He's on a long six-year contract. Um, you know, how are Valencia going to pay his wages? You know, Valencia aren't a rich club. They're not run by a billionaire owner. The Liga don't make enough as much revenue as the Premier League. How are they going to be able to afford those kind of astronomical wages? Unless Chelsea subs um, subsidise some of the wages, I don't see how we do that. That wouldn't make any financial sense whatsoever. So I don't see how this deal would make sense. Um, like I said, Citizen moving to Ajax and Anana come to Chelsea could make sense. But the problem here with Kepa is we need to find a buyer. And who's going to pay anywhere near close to the price like forget the 71 million pounds but who's going to come near you know i'm talking even 50 to 55 million we'd be lucky to get around 40 million pounds in my personal opinion because of his poor performance this season we're not taking into consider consideration last year's performances i'm just talking about this year's performances but hopefully he can pick up form and he can prove why he is he should be our number one goalkeeper for the future and many years to come so like i said that is the latest report like i don't see how that financially makes any sense but Valencia are interested in taking Kepa on a two-year loan deal. What do you guys think of that? Do you think it's realistic? Do you want to see Kepa out the door? Do you think he's not good enough for Chelsea? Leave me your thoughts opinions in the comment section below. Let's look at the goalkeeping potential replacements and targets. Now, here I've put a list of four potential goalkeeping targets you can place them with. One of them I've already mentioned, Andre Onana. The other one's Dean Henderson, Gianluigi Donnarumma, and Jan Oblak. Now, obviously... These aren't based on reports, these are just my subjective personal opinion, how I think that they would suit our side play and of course that Chelsea can actually go and try and sign. I starting off with the, the world class, the dream one, and that is Jan Oblak from Atletico Madrid. Now we all know that Jan Oblak is arguably the best goalkeeper, goalkeeper in the world, is a god for Atletico Madrid. 27 years of age, we know that goalkeepers hit their prime at a later age. He's been terrific for Atletico Madrid. Atletico is Madrid's best player for many years now. Easily Europe's best goalkeeper and he's been phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. His strengths, do I need to say more? Concentration, strong. Shot stopping reflexes, the best in the world, hands down. He's saving from close range shots. He's saving from long shots. His reflexes and shot stopping abilities is number one in the world. There's no question about that. A simply world class legendary elite goalkeeper at the highest level now obviously his main only weakness is his distribution his distribution is not great however in my personal opinion his reflexes and his other goalkeeping attributes do you know kind of uh, overpower that in a sense i think distribution can get past that it's not terrible but it is a weakness of his but this is more of a dream signing. It's not really a realistic signing. You know, unless you break the bank, which is his 100 million euro release clause, you need to find a buy for Kepa in order to essentially buy Jan Oblak. And I don't see this how this is realistic, but it would be a dream signing to sign Jan Oblak. The second target is Gianluigi Donnarumma. This one, a more of a younger one, more of an inexperienced one, but 21 years of age, Italian international, one of AC Milan's best up and coming youngsters. Penalty saving, very, very strong. Saving and close range is strong. His shot stopping reflex is strong. He comes off his line, likes to punch the ball, and his distribution is quite good. And he has no significant weaknesses. A young goalkeeper with world class elite potential. A generational talent, a fantastic goalkeeper. Very, very tall as well, so height is a main thing. And He's, you know, dominant, a commanding goalkeeper, catches stuff aerially, very good when it comes to set pieces. And I think he, he would be a very good signing for Chelsea. But again, how much would he cost? And is he much of an upgrade on Kepa? That is the other question. Now, the other goalkeeper is Dean Henderson. Obviously, I've kind of touched up, 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 touched up upon him a couple of days ago. But of course, the difficulty of Dean Henderson is he is a Manchester United player on loan at Sheffield United. And of course, he will be a bit cheap, around £50 million. But again, another major weakness is distribution. But again, concentration, shot stopping, reflexes, saving long shots and the Premier League experience is definitely something that you should consider. And I think that if our financial package was good enough, I think Maynard would actually consider if he isn't guaranteed first in football at the, the theatre. The last one is Andrew Anana, one I've mentioned in previous videos on my channel. Um, Sen um, Cameroon international plays for Ajax, 24 years of age. Long passing isn't the best, catching cross isn't the best. However, again, reflexes, penalty saving, saving close shots, and come coming off his line again, 
very, very strong attributes and again would be very, very good indeed for Chelsea. But is he much for not good on Kepa? I don't think so. But what do you guys think? Which goalkeeper would you like to for, for us to replace with Kepa? Leave your thoughts opinions in the comments section below. If you did enjoy this video to smash the like button, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell notification, and I will see you guys for my next video. Peace.